Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to detail how to estimate the third quartile uh, from a grouped frequency distribution. And the group frequency distribution that we're going to rely on for this for this video is a group frequency distribution that we've used uh, in a number of videos up to this particular point. And there is an earlier video that deals with a raw data set and constructs this group frequency distribution from the raw data set by going through a series of steps that will allow us to calculate how many classes we should have, the class widths, and so on and so forth. So if you'd like to know how we constructed this particular distribution, please have a look at one of the earlier videos in this particular series. But this particular video will be dealing with the third quartile estimation from a group frequency distribution. Okay, so I suppose the first thing is we do have a formula to calculate the third quartile. And the formula, although it might look a little bit complicated looking, is actually straightforward enough to use once we identify what's known as the quartile class. So the formula for the third quartile, uh, well let's symbolize the third quartile by Q3 and what we're going to say is it's equal to L subscript Q3 plus 3 times sigma F over 4 minus capital F of Q3 minus 1 over small f of Q3 times C of Q3. It looks very complicated looking, but I suppose there is really only one, two, three, four, five values that we require. I suppose the first thing that we should do is we should calculate our cumulative frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're just going to augment this table with the cumulative frequencies uh, of the actual frequencies. So we have capital F represents our cumulative frequencies. And the cumulative frequencies are simply just an accumulation of the frequencies as we go down through the classes. So there's four values less than 18. How many values are less than 31? Well, there's, there's the 10 and the 4 is 14. How many are less than 44? Well, there's the 12, the 10 and the 4 gives us 26. How many are less than 57? Well, there's 40. How many are less than 70? There's 49. How many are less than 83? All the observations are less than 83. So there's 52. So this is an accumulation of the frequencies as we go down through the classes. Okay. So to figure out the five pieces of this particular formula, the key that we're going to rely on is 3 times sigma f over 4. And don't forget that sigma f is simply the sum of the frequency column. And actually really what this is saying here is this, is that we have 52 observations. And what we want to calculate is 3 quarters of those 52 observations. And 3 quarters of the 52 observations, or 3 quarters of any number of observations, represents the third quartile. Okay, so step one in this particular process is going to be calculate the value of calculate three times sigma f over four. Well, that's simply equal to three times 52 over four, which is going to give us a value of 156 over four. And looking at our calculator, well, 156 divided by four gives us a value of 39. Okay, so this is our key, this 39. The next thing that we do is we inspect down the cumulative frequencies. So we're going to inspect down the cumulative frequencies until we find the first cumulative frequency that exceeds 3 times sigma f over 4. In other words, it exceeds 39. Well, 4 ain't bigger than 39. Neither is 14. 26 does not exceed 39. But 40 does exceed 39. So this particular value here has allowed us to identify this particular class here. So this class is what we call the third quartile class. Okay. Now, based on our formula, there's a number of parameters that we require. Okay. So let me just give you a list of those particular parameters. And like in the previous distributions that we concentrated on, L of subscript Q3 is going to be the lower bound of the third quartile class. So it's the lower bound of the third quartile class. 
and we've just identified where the third quartile class is. Okay. C of Q3 is going to be the width of the third quartile quartile class, okay, which is 13. Uh, small f of Q3 is going to be the actual frequency. It's the actual frequency of the third quartile class. Okay. And capital F of Q3, well, capital F of Q3 would be the cumulative frequency of the third quartile class. But actually what we want is the class before the third quartile class. So this is the cumulative frequency frequency of the class before the third quartile class. Okay, so let's see what we have. So going back to our distribution, okay, going back to our distribution, we will have that L of Q3 is the lower bounds of the third quartile class. We know the third quartile class is between 44, is 44 to 57. The lower bound is 44. C of Q3 is the width of the third quartile class, which is torqued in. Small f of Q3 is the actual frequency of the quartile class, which is 14. And capital F of Q3 minus 1 is the cumulative frequency of the class before the third quartile class. So the class before the third quartile class is 31 to 44, and its cumulative frequency is 26. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have all the values and concentrating on the formula, we end up with, well, by definition, Q3 is equal to L of Q3 plus 3 times sigma F over 4 minus capital F of Q3 minus 1 divided by small f of Q3 times C of Q3. Okay. Well, Q3 is simply equal to 44 plus 3 times sigma f over 4. Well, that was that's our key. We've calculated that to be 39. Okay, is equal to 39 minus capital F of Q3 minus 1 the cumulative frequency of the class before the third quartile class, well that's 26, and that's to be divided by small f of q3, the actual frequency of the third quartile class, which is 14. And that's all multiplied by the class width, which is 13. Okay, so what we have is, working inside the brackets first, we have 39 minus 26 gives us 13. So we have 13 fourteenths of 13, that's to be added on to 44. So what we end up with is Q3 is equal to 44 plus we have 39 minus 26 gives us 13, which needs to be divided by 14, okay, which needs to be multiplied by 13. Okay, gives us a value of 12.07. So this is equal to 40, sorry, 56. 07, which is approximately equal to 56. And hopefully what we can observe is that the third quartile, which is a value of 56, is inside the third quartile class that we estimated through inspection. Okay guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, thank you. <laughs>